Good uh, morning or afternoon, everybody, depending on where you're from. I'm Dan Hornbrook uh, with Brew Logics, and going to talk to you today about sell more, how to educate and train your taproom staff uh, to increase revenue. So uh, hopefully something you all are interested in, uh, raising the revenue uh, is something that's kind of unique sometimes. I know a lot of times in this on-premise environment, we're trying to control costs, uh, but hopefully I can add a little bit of value today uh, to increasing some of your revenue and also increasing some of the education and um, kind of excitement behind your staff uh, to get out there and help you sell more and uh, bring more enjoyment, but also some more dollars into your uh, tap room. So jumping in, let's do this. All right, so who am I? I'm Dan Hornbrook. Some of you may have seen me from some other CVP presentations, uh, but I am a 13 years uh, in the industry vet. Five, I spent five years working in off-premise, six years uh, selling into the on-premise, uh, then uh, jumping over to some brewery side of things, working in sales, marketing, and managing uh, distributors. And now uh, almost two years with Brew Logics here, working in the tech industry, as we call it. But uh, I, I couldn't get too far away from the beer industry. And uh, so we our, our technology serves uh, the beer industry and a lot of different facets. But I am a senior product manager here at Brew Logics, and I manage uh, two different platforms. I manage uh, Market My Brewery which is an awesome platform. Uh, I'll tell you a little bit more about that in a second. And then I kind of uh, double duty performance platform, which is our draft management uh, with my, uh, my co co counterpart, uh, Ryan Hunt. So, and I'm of course an overconfident dad joke teller. So uh, if you ever see me, I have one of those in my pocket and I'll be ready to tell you and uh, get a good laugh. Uh, Got to enjoy life, right? All right. So Brew Logics, this is my sales pitch. We'll get on to the actual thing here in a minute. But Brew Logics is made up of uh, three different platforms. And this is really where we get a lot of our information and a lot of where how we're trying to drive uh, the growth in craft beer and help you all uh, grow your businesses. So uh, Mark of My Brewery is the one that I, that I mentioned. This is where brewers can get in. Uh, we, we allowed it and, you know, specifically for brewers only to get in uh, and, and get control of their data and help them market themselves. Um, out in the world, uh, understanding that uh, some of the crowdsource data can become problems for brewers. Uh, we wanted to give them control and put, put you all back in the driver's seat on marketing your uh, brand, uh, your locations, and your products. Um, so that's Mark of My Brewery. BrewerDB is our consumer-facing site. So think about your next brewery experience, where you want to go, uh, what you want to do. Uh, BrewerDB gives you really cool access to kind of filter and find your next brewery experience. Uh, as well as your, you know, products. You can you can search and seek products uh, as well. Um, so, and then performance platform is our draft management uh, program. This is where, you know, we're able to uh, sense what's in kegs. Uh, we can see and deliver, um, you know, insights and data that you're going through on your draft program. It's a great uh, non-invasive uh, draft, you know, draft management program. And it's cloud operation, so you can basically run your draft program from a computer anywhere in the world. Uh, very, very cool stuff. So uh, that is who Brew Logics is. We're, we're an ecosystem uh, of these platforms, and um, really excited about uh, what we're going to do to help craft beer grow over the next few years. So you guys are obviously CBP. Mark of my brewery is really who's you know focusing on you all. And um, by going to Mark of my brewery, it gets you on BrewDB where those consumers are searching you. So. Uh, if you are wanting to jump on board with Brew Logics, Mark of My Brewery is probably your guys' route through, uh, you know, being in CBP. This is you guys are the brewers. So, this is Brew Logics. All right, let's jump into it. Enough of me. Uh, sell more. How to educate and train your taproom staff to increase revenue. So today we're going to talk about what do our customers expect from uh, from you, from your staff, from your uh, organization as a whole. Uh, how to train your staff to get them up to speed, and how to talk to you know your your customers, but also you kind of how to, you know, train them and get them to interact with the, the staff in a proper way. That's going to make it a great experience for the people that come into your tap room, uh, but as well, uh, make you a little bit more money in your pocket, too, uh, so you can help grow the organization. Uh, we're going to give you some tools to implement um, and we're also going to give you some goals. Right. Uh, we, we always want to set goals. And then at the, you know, in the bottom of this. Uh, and I guess in the description of this video, uh, there's going to be a, a landing page where you guys can go download a uh, takeaway and a document where you can take to your staff and, and uh, you know, put a program in place and uh, help keep yourself accountable so you can help keep your staff accountable as well. So let's jump in. All right. So let's set the table. What do our customers expect when they walk into a craft tap room? 
They expect a really unique experience, um, a, a special place to come to, um, someplace where, you know, it's not your, your, your chain. It's not your Applebee's. It's not your O'Charlie's. Um, it's just something really unique that they can enjoy, that they're going to have a different experience when they come in there. Um, you know, obviously, a lot of people enjoy the independent and local uh, feel of that. They like to support it. Uh, and they also like to go to their, you know, local uh, brewery and, and enjoy the, the, the camaraderie that comes along with that. Um, as well as people like to discover new experiences. They like to discover new breweries. So as people are traveling and, uh, you know, they're seeking out, you know, what's the local place that, that people are getting their beer from or what's the, the cool place to go to? Um, you know, you think about it when I when I go to Florida, I always like to check out the local brewery in Florida while we're on spring break and things like that. I'm always just trying to discover new places and new experiences uh, just to throw into my uh, experience book. Um, people like to be social there, right? This is a place where they can come. They can set up the belly up to the bar. Or they can uh, get out on the patio. They can play some yard games uh, and just be social. If you have live music or trivia, um, it's just a great opportunity for people to get out and, and interact with other human beings uh, or dogs. You know, we have animals in these breweries as well. They also look for great food. Somewhere down the line, breweries became, you know, culinary, you know, destinations, uh, which is great. We're, I'm excited about it. Uh, Brewlogist is excited about that. We think beer and food go great together. Um, but yes, a lot of you all have become great culinary destinations. Um, you know, backing up the travel destinations, people will travel to go to breweries. Uh, we see that, you know, on BreeDB, people are seeking, um, you know, different breweries outside of where they are searching from. You know, people, I'm from here in Indianapolis, people are definitely seeking, you know, to go to uh, Colorado and get that great mountain view uh, along with a great pint. So people are looking for travel destinations and giving them reasons to travel. Um, and then, of course, they're also looking to learn a little something, you know, while they're in there. Brew knowledge is, is very important. And this is something we'll talk about uh, educating your staff so they can educate their uh, consumers, you know, so they, they understand what, what they're about to experience, whether that's in the beer uh, or in the food, or even both. How does that mix together? Uh, so that's really what you know. Customers are seeking out of these craft tap rooms. So kind of setting the the expectations and and setting the bar as we go forward of kind of where we have to go to. So one thing that you know this quote down here: hospitality is present when something happens for you. It is absent when something happens to you. Uh, those two propos prepositions, four and two, express it all. Uh, this is a great book by Danny Meyer. Uh, setting the table. He's got a tremendous amount of experience in the uh, hospitality business, but it's very true. Uh, you know, as a customer comes in, we want to want to work for them. We want to provide them something for them, whether that, that's an experience, uh, some, you know, great beer, great food, whatever it is, but people want things to happen for them. So always keep that in the back of your mind and, and maybe express that to your staff. You know, what are you doing for them uh, versus to them, right? So um, one thing is you guys know, right? You guys are in one of the hardest businesses. Brewing, brewing beer is fun, uh, but all the other things that come along with it are, are pretty tough. Uh, and you're, you're under scrutiny. You know, you go to a, a restaurant uh, that just makes food. You know, they're not scrutinizing the beer they have on tap. They didn't make it. Um, but you guys are. You're making the, the, the drinks. You're making the food. Uh, you got the staff. You, you present the experience to them. And then obviously the service that they get uh, from your establishment is, is all under scrutiny, right? Um, and you get it from the amateurs to the experts. Uh, I can't tell you how many times I've seen, you know, reviews, and I'm sure you guys are all well aware of those reviews uh, that talk about like, hey, I didn't like the amber ale. Uh, not a big fan of amber ales, right? Like, what are they doing drinking an amber ale in my bar if they don't like them? And then they leave a bad review about it. And then these are these amateurs and experts, you get it all, right? So um, everything's under the sun that, that um, people will complain about, and we all know that. But you guys all become professionals in, in a lot of this. Here's the list of it, right? Negotiating, hiring, cooking, pricing, selling, servicing, marketing, hosting, teaching your staff, you know, putting out fires all day long. Uh, it's a tough business and it's emotional. Um, but, you know, we are craft beer professionals, so we have to let that shit go. Right. Uh, so um, it's it's a reminder to ourselves why we got into the business. And we, we get we get in the business, I, you know, really. For me, and you know, I think for a lot of anybody that I've talked to in the craft beer uh, world, they want to create really cool human experiences and relationships. And I can't tell you enough that this is the relationships of what kept me into the beer industry. Um, it, it's special. It's unique. We, you know, I think that's something unique about craft beer professionals is the relationships um, that we have as professionals 
on this level of just knowing that we're all in this together. And, um, but you also get to create those relationships with your customers. And, um, you know, that's something that I always try to bring someone into the, into the, I guess the circle, right. Um, as they come into the industry and just saying, Hey, this is a really unique industry that people really care about. They care about each other and uh, they care about making the, you know, each day a better day than the one before. So remember why you got in this in the end, right. And try to spread that joy uh, of the craft beer industry to your, to your, you know, fellow staff, your fellow friends. Um, and, and, you know, obviously make people feel special. Um, that's what you want to do. And then again, give them, unique life experiences. You guys have done a great job. Uh, I've seen a ton of just great experiences at these breweries and they're all unique. And, you know, everybody's trying to one up the other person and it's not a competition, but we're all just trying to raise the bar together. And um, man, you guys have done a great job. So uh, keep on doing that. Um, but, you know, bringing people together and I always, you know, somebody said this down the road, but I'll, I'll mimic it probably in the wrong uh, words, but, you know, sometimes these, the craft beer, um, breweries uh, they become more of like a, a church or a communal space where people are more honest with each other and they're more happy than some churches and think about that you're really pro providing a, a unique uh, place for these people to come to and now it's our job to provide more to them and um, so the, you know that's a, that's a um, that's an effort that we have to, to give and constantly learn and grow uh, so hopefully uh, you know through through today we can give you a little bit of more uh, tips on how to make a, a better uh, experience for your customers, but also grow that revenue in your pocket um, through your staff and through 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 your uh, experience through your uh, experience at your brewery. All right, so let's talk about revenue streams that are coming in through the tap room. You have your beer, your product. Uh, I know we have some other uh, producers in here, whether it's kombucha or cider. Uh, we support it all, right? Um, but we also have food, and this is something that's big and it's growing, and we we see a lot of opportunity within the the food market within these tap rooms. Um, so I'm gonna give you a major in, in those two products. And then we're going to just speak a little bit about a couple other opportunities that I'm not as well versed in, uh, from my personal experiences, but I can, you know, just tell you a few tips that I think, uh, you might be able to take away a, a few tidbits from, um, but, um, the, the mug and barrel clubs and memberships, um, private event space, uh, merch and tours, those are all revenue opportunities for you all. And not everybody takes advantage of it. Not everybody has food. Not everybody has memberships and things like that. I understand that there's a lot of, um, you know, a lot of behind the scenes things that go, have to go into a lot of those things. But um, these are opportunities for you guys to increase your revenue within uh, your four walls. So uh, let's jump in. So let's talk about it. Number one, let's sell more beer, right? Or, or more product. If you guys are kombucha cider um, or even coffee, we got coffee in our, our kegerator downtown, down here. So one thing you need to know is you need to know, you know, where your staff is, where are they starting at? And how do you know that? How do you gauge that? And right out of the gate, it's, it's interviews, you know, um, when you're interviewing people to come work for you in your tap room, uh, ask them, you know, what's your beer knowledge, but be encouraging about it. It's not like you have to have a certain level, right? We all know, uh, the staffing, the staffing issues. Um, it's, it's, it's tough, right? So you just need a really sometimes a warm body in there just to take orders, right? And that's what we're going to try to get away from. We don't want to just take orders. But uh, people are, you know, it, it encourage them to learn more, right? But just get a gain, gain of knowledge of like, just where are they at within their uh, beer knowledge or brew knowledge, right? Um, ask them, just say, hey, do you know about this beer? Do you know what makes a hazy IPA a hazy IPA? Do you know why um, an extra pale ale, as you guys see here on the right side, is actually less bitter than some IPAs? That's That's a very important part, you know, when they go to the table and somebody says, I don't like a bitter beer. Um, you know, I don't want the extra pale ale. I want the IPA. Well, that's about to be a bad experience for some people because an extra pale ale, you know, most of the time can be a lot more milder, uh, and on bitterness than an IPA. So, um, just ask them along the way on a day to day, uh, you know, interaction with them, test them a little bit, say, Hey, can you give me, um, two points about this beer? Just as you're pouring it, right. Test them throughout the time, encourage your management, uh, to test them throughout the time. And it's not pass or fail. It's just to, to, to get them up to speed uh, and always encourage them to learn more. If they want to know more and you don't have the answer, send them to the brewer, uh, send them to somebody that knows, encourage them to learn. Uh, we do this with our kids. We want them to learn. We want them to be eager to go out and uh, gain more knowledge about what they are selling and what they are interacting with on a daily basis. Uh, but also, the, you know, the important thing here is what do they need to know? 
Um, so on the right here is, is our Market My Brewery brew card. Um, so if you guys get into Market My Brewery and you create your, your products, uh, this is the, the brew card that pops up. And this is what we, we want to deliver to staff, what we think is the most important uh, pieces to the staff members. Um, you know, they have 30 to 40 seconds uh, to interact with the customer. Uh, and I get it. You know, stories about beers really help sell and, and you know, how you made it and what, you know, how you came up with the name and things like that. They're all very important to the whole brand of this product story. Um, but they only have 30 to 40 seconds to actually help a customer make a decision. And you have to remember that. It's not about the story. It's about how you can make a customer make a decision uh, that they're not flipping through the, the cheesecake factory menu. That's 20 pages long and they don't know what to make. So let's give them information that's going to be impactful and useful. Uh, it's going to help the customer decide uh, what kind of you know beverage they're going to drink. So uh, on the right, again, you see style, ABV, a tasting note. I don't need to know the story, right? Or the description of it, right? Just give me a tasting note. How's this going to um, you know, how's this going to drink, you know, as an experience sitting at the table, what are the primary flavor notes? Uh, and then again, food pairings, this is huge, right? They want, they, they're, if they're there to have food and beer, they might make a decision that's going to go great with their beer and they should, uh, it's a great experience. Uh, it's, it's a better experience. And again, don't let them lean on samples, uh, to, to, to their guests. Excuse me. When it, when if if I'm a server and somebody asks me what does this taste like and I just go and and you know let me go get a sample of it really quick I'm just an order taker at that point in time I'm not giving this customer a great experience and that's something I challenge you all with I, I've had it happen to myself and I'm not knocking anybody um, but um, you know instead of them saying hey let me go get a sample but I can tell you that hey this you know this extra pale ale has grapefruit and lemon and pine flavor notes and it pairs great with uh, you know roasted or grilled meats as you're looking at the menu man. What a change in experience that that is versus just taking it on themselves. They're trying to learn themselves as consumers. So if we want to sell more beer, we have to be a bit of um, a, a bit of a professional uh, on what we we have to know what we're selling to them. And again, I go back to selling. Right. We're not order taking. We're selling the products uh, to these uh, folks. So think about that as you go forward. What do they need to know? And also. Just give them what they need to know. Don't give them everything else because they're only got so much, you know, time and memory space in their head um, that they can remember things. So uh, bite sized pieces of information. Uh, Mark my brewery is a great opportunity to get in there and put your products in and any staff can, can get on there as well. And they can learn as time goes on. So this is a, a really cool uh, quote that our, our director of growth here um, put out there in a recent article. If your staff feels engaged and taken care of chances are your guests will receive a similar treatment. Guys, it's a waterfall effect. If you, if you take care of your staff and you make them feel engaged in the whole process, they will take that downstream. So always remember that you're going to treat your staff how your staff is going to treat your customers. So, all right, let's jump in. New beer. What do we do now? Right. You know, right now servers and, and, and wait staff and tap room uh, folks, um, they got phones in their pockets. So what is the first thing they're probably going to do? They're going to go to the internet and they're going to say, what is this 420 extra pale ale? Um, you know, this comes with a great story, uh, up on the top. It tells you the IBUs and the ABV and tells you the ingredients, the hops, the malt bill, uh, flavor profile. But how does that help a consumer make a decision? Right. All right. So let me go get some more information that I can take to the table, uh, with me and sell this beer. OK, I got a cool score about it on, you know, this website and, you know, there's some reviews and ratings and, oh, this is just a copy and paste from uh, the other site. You know, that doesn't give me anything else. I go to another site. Right. Well, this beer is no longer being poured. Well, it is right. It's just bad information out in the market uh, as people start searching it. So, again, you have to get ahead of it um, as a as a as, as a, a owner as a taproom manager you have to get out in front of this and give your staff the right information and so i challenge you all if you have a new beer if you have old beers and getting people up to speed uh, don't make them go seek it out on the internet um, by themselves um, get into market my brewery you control it they can get in there and learn it as you control it um, you know here's some great opportunities for your staff to learn um, just about beer uh, brewery db our, our YouTube page on Brewery TV has great videos about just, you know, what is the experience going to be with ABV segments? Uh, what effects uh, hops and malts have on beers? 
it's a great tool for them to go home and just learn about beer, right? But then they can take that back and they can understand what you guys are also telling them about these products. Um, you can also get onto, you know, breedb.com. It's a consumer site. Anybody can get on there. I challenge you to tell them to go on there and just look at a couple beers and see what they think about it. Um, it's, it's a great website and they can leverage it um, very heavily. Books, make them available. I'm not telling you to give everybody a, you know, a, a, a Bible on brewing and a Bible on beer tasting, but just make books available, make educational documents available for them. Um, I know that, you know, this book here sits with me. Beer pairing, Julie hers, shout out. Um, you know, th these are great books just to keep around for people to, to look at pre-shift and, and challenge them. You know, go look at a page in the, the beer pairing book before you start your shift. Uh, they, they're going to learn something incrementally. It doesn't have to all be uh, shot at them through a fire hydrant. So, uh, and then always collaborate between your brewery and staff regularly. This is huge. Um, I should say it's between your brewery, your brewing staff and your taproom staff regularly. Um, this makes everything come together as a whole for you guys uh, as an organization. When your taproom staff is talking with your brewers, the people who made the beer, they're probably going to find out some really cool intricacies about it. Um, but also, they're just going to find out great information about the brewing process along the way. And you might have people that are, you know, serving in your tap room right now that want to get to the brewing side. So think about that down the downstream effects of that. But you know, when they're asking you questions and you don't know, and then you tell them, "Well, I'll go ask," uh, you know, Bill, the brewer in the back. Um, it's going to take some time, and that 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 uh, eagerness to learn in the moment might slide away. So always encourage them to talk, um, uh, you know, regularly with the brewing staff. And um, you'll, I think you'll see some great brew knowledge coming forward. So one thing, you know, to take away is some table side selling tips. So again, we're getting away from the, the order taker. We want to, we want to actually sell our beers. We want to upsell. We want to uh, do all these great things and increase, in, increase revenue. So uh, step one is what I say is welcome and wonder. Gauge a customer with curiosity. Hey, you know, welcome into our brewery today. Um, have you been in? What's your, you know, have you had craft beer before? What do you like? Uh, okay, great. Well, take a look at the menu. We have a few of those. Excuse me. And um, I'll be back. I'll, I'll let you take a look at it real quick. Um, you are their guide to their experience, right? So you think about, you know, going up a mountain, right? You have a guide taking you up the mountain. You, Your staff is the guide uh, to this person's experience within your uh, brewery. All right. So listen and react. So if they say, no, I don't like hoppy beers. OK, well, don't suggest a hoppy beer, but you have to ask that question first. Right. Um, so be be inquisitive, be curious about what they're uh, where, what level they are. Um, and again, don't degrade if they're just new to it or don't degrade if they're uh, super experienced about it. Right. Um, but also sell the menu that you have to sell the menu. And then again, I'm just going to hound on. We can't be order takers anymore if you want a great experience. Um, I always say resell the menu every visit. Um, if you had this beer, hey, have you had? Have you tried this other beer? Um, have you tried this beer with this dessert? There's opportunities every time you come to the table to resell the menu. Um, you know, and, and they, the different moments call for different opportunities um, throughout the the length of the stay. Um, but always be selling, and you know that's a, that's obviously a sales thing. It's been ground into me, but. Um, you have opportunities to make these, sell, these, these sales and, and grow these experiences every time uh, you visit the table or you visit them at the bar. Add-ons. If, 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 if you can get this through a tap, tap room um, staff member's mind, the more you add on to a bill, more than likely the higher that tip's going to be, right? So, you know, when, we, when the growlers, the gift cards, the merch, the tours, the clubs, the to-go beer, they have, to make, they have to be aware that they have to make that pitch before the check comes out. So. You know, we'll give you some tools at the end here to, to kind of have a checklist of how the, you know, how you go about these things. Um, but they have to know that, you know, you have to try to make that sale. You have to ask for the sale. Uh, you can't just be okay with what they give you when they order. All right. So let's talk about some examples. Um, this is, these, these are my fun. This is my fun part, right? Um, all right. Hey, I see you enjoyed the new lager. You want me to grab you another one? Don't wait for the customer to say, hey, give me another one. If you're coming back to the table and you see it's below half, get it going, right? Get that beer in the in the pipeline of getting poured. That's another beer ring in. Uh, that's another little bit to, to the bill uh, and obviously more revenue, right? That's what we're here in this uh, presentation for. Um, second one. Hey, you know that mango wheat pairs great with our buffalo chicken sandwich. 
Okay, so they ordered a mango wheat beer. Um, they're still looking at the menu. Maybe start tempting them to a certain part of the menu at this point in time. Uh, start correlating these food pairings with these beers. Um, you're, you're already planting a seed uh, for the, their next decision. And, and you already look kind of a, a step above, um, you know, just an order taker at this point in time. You're suggesting you're a professional um, when you come to the table. Uh, third here. Hey, before your food arrives, would you like me to grab you another amber ale? I can't stress enough about this one. Um, if I get a beer and I'm ordering food, okay, I, they come to the table, they take my beer order. I'm looking at the menu. I get my beer. Uh, they drop the beer. Uh, then they take my order. I'm sitting there finishing my beer. Food comes. I don't know the percentage rate, and I'm not a professional in, in understanding percentage rates for this, and I don't even know how you would. Andrew probably has some great secret hopper um, data about this, but if you don't offer someone another beer before their food arrives, I can only assume the chance of them ordering another beer after that first beer goes down a tremendous amount of percent. So always encourage your staff before food comes out, go ask if they want another beer. Get that beer in their hands before they get too full and they may not want another beer. Uh, this is the biggest one that I'll stand on. Okay, Andrew just gave me a tip here. Uh, on 45% of the visits, staff are, aren't encouraging another beer when they do. Uh, I'm sorry. On 45% of visits, staff aren't encouraging another beer. And when they do, tabs are magically $6.50 higher. That's what I'm saying. You have to ask for it. So, uh, you know, as a takeaway from this one point, right, encourage your staff. Before the food comes out, make a stop back at the table to get another beer ring in. Okay. Uh, so let's move on to the next one. You like vanilla flavor notes. You should try out our coconut vanilla porter. Flavor notes are something that can that can carry people into another style. They can carry people into another realm, right? Um, they're going to grow their palate. Um, I'm a huge vanilla person, right? This is why I put this in here. I am going to be more. Um, uh, I'm going to be more encouraged to try something new if it has a flavor note that I like. Um, so this is why we always encourage people to put flavor notes, primary flavor notes, hints of flavor notes. It's going to encourage people to step out of their comfort zone to try different beers. Um, but all of a sudden, you know, the, the server saying you like vanilla flavor notes, you should try this one, right? That's a professional suggestion. Um, and, and all of a sudden that experience becomes even better for this customer if they do try this product uh, and they like it, right? All of a sudden their, their craft beer, um, you know, palate grows uh, exponentially. And then the last one. Uh, we kind of talked about this on the last side. Before I ring you out, would you like a growler to go? You like that beer. I know you like that beer. You drank two of them, right? Ask them for a growler to go. You know, I, you know, growlers vary from prices, but that's enough. That's more than six fifty for a pint that, that Andrew just told us, right? Um, so make sure you try to get them out the door, whether it's a growler or if it's a you know to go beer or whatever it is. If you see that they're enjoying a beer, make sure they take one home to enjoy at home as well. lost it there we go all right sell more food right so this is something we're huge on here at brew logics beer and food pairings and we've done some really cool uh videos we've done some really cool pairings um to help educate people uh and consumers uh so please get in and, and understand that this isn't just for consumers this is for staff and as you have these this new generation of you know uh, wait staff and tap room uh folks coming in uh beer and, beer and food pairings man what an experience this can be um, you know, first and foremost, if you have food to offer, uh, this is you. If you don't have food to offer, this might not be you. But there's snacks and there's opportunities to, um, you know, bring food in. And I know there's food trucks and there's other other different uh, ways of getting uh, food into your tap room. Uh, but make sure you have a way to sell what you got around you. Um, leverage your, your 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 food partners, your kitchen, right? Uh, go to the chef, go to the, go to the kitchen, and say, hey, uh, you're cooking this, you know, chicken sandwich. What do you what do you think goes great with it? That's on tap. Get them all inclusive and get them collaborating on this. Uh, get your, you know, maybe put a, you know, three or four dishes out before the shift and, um, you know, put a couple beers and ask your staff, hey, what did you guys like best? Did you like the lager with the chicken sandwich? Did you like the wheat beer with the chicken sandwich? What did you like? And now all of a sudden you guys are all in, in you know, feeling inclusive in this thing and collaborating on what you're going to go to to sell your customers as an experience. Um, again, upsell. This gives you an opportunity to upsell. Um you know, yes, this can turn a, gr a good experience into a great experience. Um, you know, this is what I would say. Yeah, yes. Well, if you if you want a good experience to turn to a great one, you got you, if you want the chicken and waffles, uh, it goes great with the stout that you got in your hand. Right. 
Um, so they already got the beer. Now let's get the food in their hands. Let's upsell the food. Um, you already know what they're what they're drinking. So just make a suggestion for a food pairing. And then just communicate with your staff. Let them know, hey, this new beer goes great with this. If you you know if you don't have the collaboration sessions, just communicate with your staff. It can go a long way um, down the road. Great food pairing knowledge. Make it fun and collaborative. Again, I just kind of talked about that. Um, this is this is where your, your staff can go learn. Um, they can learn with each other. The brewers, getting the brewers involved with this thing. Uh, man, how much fun is that to, for the brewers to actually, uh, you know, see their their craft that they make get paired with another professional's craft. And then, you, you know, bring those two together. It's just a great opportunity uh, to, to really raise the bar within your organization. Uh, head over to BrewDB's YouTube page. Uh, you can get some great tips from, we, you know, we partnered with Jeremy Stored and Good Beer Matters over there to, to deliver some mouth-watering, savory beer tastings. I tell you, every time I watch the videos, I'm, I'm hungry. And uh, I've been, you know, January, new, new year, new me. I've been on a diet and it's not good for me to watch these videos. I'm telling you right now. Um, the Beer Pairing Book. I can't recommend this enough. Um, it, it is a great book for anybody to have just laying around. You know, I'm going out to dinner tonight, Friday night with my wife. I might look at it and say, you know, we're, we're going to go to a brewery. And, you know, what can I get with a, a beer that I'm looking to, to have tonight? Um, this is a great opportunity just to kind of jump ahead of it, right? Um, but hopefully, hopefully their staff can sell me on a beer, uh, beer and food pairing at that when we go there tonight. So, and then find a few of these things within your uh, four walls. You know, if you have peanuts on the table and that's all you got, or popcorn, um, that goes great with with lockers, right? That's that's a great food pairing. It doesn't have to be something super integral as a blue cheese burger that's on top of the you know the beer pairing book here it can be something very simple it can be candy i've seen some really cool unique pairings out there from the, from the breweries um it's candy it's it's uh it's snacks it's actually full full meals um it's a valentine's day five course meal it, it starts from the small and goes to the, the tall right um so uh, just very very fun stuff uh, encourage them to go out and get it um here's some suggested selling examples for your team um what do you like on the menu um okay i would get the blue cheese and the steak salad since you got the raspberry sour it pairs great together okay so that's perfect they ask you what do you like on the menu and you give them a great upsell right the blue cheese and steak that's probably a higher ticket ring uh than just a hamburger and and, and it's a great pairing they already know it in the back of their head because you've been telling them hey you know the raspberry sour goes great with our blue cheese and steak salad they know that already they don't have to, to look around or even wonder about it um, all right, the, stat, the uh, customer says, I'm in between the gyro and the buffalo mac and cheese. I'm gonna tell them, I would recommend going with the gyro, knowing that you got a stout. The heaviness of the stout will pair nicely with the lighter gyro. It's easy, right? You're not, you're, not, you're not making rocket science there, but this is a easy pairing to know that your, your heavier beers go great with some lighter beers, uh, but also maybe some desserts. That's a great, upper time to, great opportunity uh, to upsell to the dessert. Hey, I see you got the stout. It compares well with the raspberry tart that we got. Um, beer and food pairings, you know, they go great with uh, events as well. So, uh, I, you know, you go to the table, you know, I'm just in for the trivia game and not eating. What do you suggest? I suggest a lighter style beer that will keep you sharp and on your game for the evening. So if they don't want to eat food, it still gives you an opportunity uh, to pair them with an event or pair them with a, uh, an activity going on within, you know, within your uh, establishment. So. Just know, uh, there, you know, if they're in for a long period of time, ABV does matter. Um, and that will, you know, if, if they trust it, you're going to give them a, a great, great experience. They're not going to walk out of there feeling a little wobbly. Um, that, that's an even better experience for you all. So. All right, let's talk about merch. I'm going to tell you this. Um, some of you may disagree. You may agree with me. Staff should push merch third to beer and food. Here's my reason why. Selling third because a consumer can buy swag anywhere. They can get on your website. Most of you guys have websites now. They can buy swag from an, a t-shirt from another place, but they cannot replicate your food and drink experience. Sell your experience. Make them come back because they want more. They can get swag outside of your four walls. They can't get your experience outside of your four walls. So always tell your staff, beer and food first, merge third. Um, swag out your staff uh, with appropriate gear. I know it's not cheap. Um, you know, but a t-shirt and a hat here and there, the new, the new t-shirt, the new hat coming in, you know, get it to your, get it to your staff. You don't have to give it to everybody. I, I, it all costs money. I understand that. But
but you know, swag them out, make them, make them show it off. They are literally walking billboards as they're walking, you know, through the tap rooms. Um, and, and, you know, before any check is closed at a table or bar, uh, the server or tap room staff should always ask, Hey, you see this hat on my head? I see you got, a, you know, another brewery hat on your head. How about you get a new one? I'll throw one on, on for you. Um, just always ask uh, for that, that upsell and the swag. And, um, you can always tell if somebody's into the beer swag, they're usually wearing some and just tell them, Hey, we got this new one in. There's great opportunities to upsell uh, swag at the table. Put it on the tables. Uh, I don't know if you guys remember this. Maybe I don't see it much anymore. You go to an Italian restaurant and you look at the table and you got a wine bottle sitting, uh, you know, right on the table between you and your love. And uh, your love looks at it and you look at it and you have this moment where you think about, oh, no, we got to buy the bottle. It's on the table. She's looking at it. I'm looking at it. Right. Uh, so you, you end up buying the bottle of wine while it's there. Put some swag on the table, right? I'm not saying to put keychains on there. People probably slide those in their pocket thinking they're free. But put put some kind of swag on the table. It's going to make it easily accessible for them to grab and, and take with them. Uh, and by take with them, I mean buy, right? Um, but um, just a great opportunity to put some stuff on the table. Um, I bought many bottles of wine because it sat on the table. And, and it's just easy marketing. Get it out in front of them. Uh, sell the pints for a special with the beer. Right. We all have these pint glasses. Um, most of the time people swipe them. So why not try to make a little bit of money on them before they walk out your door? Uh, so, you know, put up a special every once in a while. Uh, take a pint home with a beer. Uh, so order this beer and, and, you know, you can leverage this in multi, you know, multiple different ways. But, um, you know, if it's, it's if it's a slower beer that you're trying to get moving through there, say, hey, we're offering a free pint with this beer. Um, and, and you can work that beer out. But, all you know, sell some pints on top of it. Hey, if you get this. Um, if you get this hazy IPA, we have the glass to go with it uh, for an extra two bucks or whatever it may be. You can take the pint home with you, upsell. Uh, pint and a shirt, right? Just make it something super special. Uh, it's not just a pint to take home. It's a pint and a shirt. So package some things together. Uh, put it on the table. This is one you could put on the table with a pint and a shirt. Put it, maybe throw a sticker in there too, right? Um, make people your walking billboards out in the real world. Uh, get, them, get them out there. Um, and then appreciate consistent customers. They'll be your biggest advocate. If you guys have people coming in, and, I, and, and all of you do, uh, you have those consistent customers that come in, throw a shirt on them. Throw them a shirt. They are going to, you know, I don't, the, the old saying, like, you know, one mad customer will tell six people, one happy customer will tell two. Um, so get them out there wearing your shirt and be proud of who they are to you uh, as a customer and make them feel special. And, and then have people, you know, they will draw people into your tap room. So. That's one thing I'm big on too. All right. So we got our major. That was a lot of work, but you get a minor degree with Dan Hornbrook right now. Um, I don't have a minor, so this is going to be interesting. Um, tours. As your taproom staff goes, I know some of you offer tours, some of you don't, some of you charge for tours, some of you don't. Um, th this is an opportunity to take to say, hey, you're enjoying the beer. You want to go see where it's made. You know, it's a $5 per tour. Uh, we'll put, a, you know, put it on your tab. Um, maybe you offer a special, Hey, uh, when you buy this beer, you get a free tour, uh, things like that. It's going to increase, uh, the experience opportunity. And, you know, if they have a beer while they're taking a tour, they're probably going to have a beer on their way out. So, um, it gives them some time, some more time within your four walls. And that's more time for you to sell them on more product, on more merch, on more, uh, opportunities. So. As you know, social media, right? They try to keep you swiping and they try to keep you there so you can get, you know, get hit with the ads. It's the same concept. Keep them in your four walls. You have a better opportunity to sell more. Um, mug clubs and bottle clubs. I'm gonna leave. I'm gonna be honest with you. Uh, there are some great people within the CBP. Um, um, you know, let's call it a club of the CBP um, group that are much more professional about the the clubs and and and, and uh, mug clubs and bottle clubs. Um, but I will say this, incentivize your staff to sell it. It's a, it's a really cool opportunity to make people feel more inclusive into what you're doing as an organization. Um, if you do sell a mug club or bottle club, uh, throw your server five bucks. Um, it, it's, it's, it's a tip, right? Um, you just got a, a really cool um, you know, consumer engaged into what you're doing. And make sure your, your staff realizes that that means a lot to you by incentivizing them a little bit. It doesn't have to be much. Um, maybe, you know, start a bit of a competition. Whoever can sell the most gets, uh, you know, 25 bucks or whatever it is. Uh, you will drive more sales that way. All right. Second bullet point there. 
Um, hey, if you enjoyed this porter, you should try our barrel aged uh, porter that we got sitting in our bottle club. Um, you know, it's a bottle club. It's got some exclusivity to it, um, but it's a suggestive sale. You enjoyed this. You're going to love that. Right. Um, so make sure that they're, they're taking those opportunities. Um, but again, you have to educate your staff what's in the bottle club um, so they know. So keep them all in the loop on what's going on. And, and you can tell them, you know, hey, we got these, you know, maybe it's this this stout uh, that you got on tap and then you have some really cool exclusive bottles. And you just tell your staff, hey, uh, if you sell this this uh, stout, just make a pitch just saying, hey, if you like this stout, you should check out our bottle club. OK, it's easy as that. And that's all you're telling your staff. If they order this, suggest this. That's all you got to do. Excuse me. Private events and open space. This is a this is one that um, is tough, right? If you have the private space, if you have the open space, uh, it's it's dollars just sitting open. You must market it. Be a neighbor. I think you guys all know this. Again, there's there's much more educated people on this uh, segment, um, but you must market it. Go out, talk to your neighbors. Uh, the businesses around you and let them know that you have this private space available and you're local. You're, you're having your, your community come in. If you see people with logos on their shirts, you think about people coming in for lunch or dinner and they have business logos on them. And just ask them, Hey, uh, you know, do you guys ever get out for events or lunches or whatever? We'd love to host you guys. Um, you got to welcome people in and, uh, you know, come in, come in, come in. And I, I'm telling you right now, if you don't ask them, they're probably not going to ask you. So make sure you're asking people, uh, with business uh, shirts on, if they, they're, they're easy logos to spot, uh, get out and ask them. Or even you as a taproom manager uh, or an owner, uh, if you see it, go ask them. Be a part of the, the taproom staff. Uh, if they see you doing it, um, they're probably going to try to mirror what you're doing as well. Remind people it's open for celebrations. Um, so if you do card people, and you can ask your host or your bartenders or whoever carding people, if you see people's birthdays coming up, um, just let them know, hey, if you see someone's birthday, just encourage them to come back for a celebration, okay? So I'm, I'm carding somebody. Um, uh, okay, Dan, your birthday is May 6th. Okay, um, you, you know May, you know May's coming around. Why don't you come in? We, we have some really great beers in May. Our summer lineup will be released. Come, why don't you come in? We'll host you and your your friends for a great celebration here. It's easy just to mention to people some awesome opportunities to use this space, and everybody uses their open space, their private space differently. Um, if you see people on a date. Uh, and you have some great wedding venue places. Hey, you know, when you guys get married, why don't you think about having your, uh, you know, your, your, your reception here at our place. We'd love to welcome you in. Um, it's just being welcoming. And it's going to help these people come in. All right. Some top line tips. Selling more in the tap room. You, you, you want to sell products, right? Don't take orders. Always be closing as Einstein says in our picture, right? Um, you have to, you have to encourage your staff to go sell products, educate them, collaborate with them, incentivize them, um, make sure they know um, bite-sized pieces of information uh, that's going to help them sell. I remember, go back to the, the first couple slides, um, you know, just make sure they have the right information. Don't give them too much. Um, if they want to learn more, just let them know, I'm going to tell you more, but here's what's really going to help you sell at the table. And that's what they're um, most engaged with. Um, ask for the sale. You guys have to get out and ask as, as brewery owners and managers, um, you have to go and be a part of the whole process at a table. Uh, go ask for the sale. Um, as you guys know, this is my my stingy one. Ask for another beer before the food. I should come up with some cool acronym for that thing, but I can't tell you how many times I've actually, um, you know, had one beer, had food, and just been like, now I'm pretty full. I don't want another one, but I, I would have had another one if they would have asked me before my food came out. Upsell. Um, you know, it goes back to what's, you know, what's more profitable for you on your menu. Uh, what's more profitable for you on your draft? Uh, if you see some opportunities to to upsell, uh, make sure you're telling your staff to do it. If they order the lager, why don't you tell you know try to get them on a, a higher price product the next time? If they order a stout, try to get them on a, some barrel aged stout to go. Um, you can always just correlate a lot of different things. And appreciate your staff; they'll appreciate your customers. It's a waterfall effect. If you appreciate your staff, they will then in turn you know appreciate their customers coming in and be more engaged with them. Uh, which is going to be a happier customer and a return customer. So uh, that is, is is what I have. I know I spoke quickly. Obviously, this is on YouTube. You guys can, can check back. Um, but again, check out some of our resources that we have, uh, you know, as BrewLogic's organization. Um, Mark of My Brewery um, is a great resource for you as brewers to get in, get your staff in there. Um, they can all, you know, get in there and check out what your products are. 
of what your products are, but also encourage them to go venture out and check out MarieDB.com. Uh, that's a consumer site. Even you guys can get on there and, um, and, and learn a little something. So I'm going to leave with this. Uh, these days, every single brewery is a unique and special thing, just like all the rest. Along with good beer, those that offer better education and a great experiences by taking advantage of tools like Margaret Brewery will change all that. So Jeremy Sword's great partners of ours. Go learn a little something about his food pairings on YouTube. Um, thank you all so much. Again, there will be a, uh, a takeaway in the, in the uh, description at the bottom of the video. So be sure to go get that takeaway and uh, we'll see you all next time.